All right, this is going to be my reaction video to the Ravens' Week 4 loss to the Bills in Baltimore. You know, pretty competitive game. There's a lot to say about it, and I will get to my points. Um, I'm going to try to simultaneously slow myself down and speed this video up because I'm quite angry, as I'm sure a lot of you are, uh, justifiably so. Um, I do have, I do want to make sure I comment on the first half and some of the things during the first half because I feel like if I do not and I get into my rant early, then I'll never get back to that. So I had written some notes down at this at the, at the halftime, and even though it seems kind of crazy, I, I'd like to read them off a little bit just to remind myself and you of some of the things that have happened up to halftime. Of course, most of our conversation is going to be focused on the last 15, 18 minutes of gameplay. You know, once again, so we we jump out to a 20 to three lead after a pair of turnovers by the Bills. Really unique start by our defense. I think Marlon Humphrey's playing at an incredibly high level, guys. I think we had some guys in the, in, in the front four <clears throat> play really well. Also, one of the turnovers was the tip pass by Campbell. I believe that Humphrey intercepted, and then he like crossed the field trying to take it to the house. And I'm like, just shaking my head. You know, generally what you're taught to do is take it down the near sideline. That's the fastest path to get a touchdown. Now, he must have saw some flow. I haven't seen it. You know, he must have saw some flow that, you know, caused him to go back across the field because he's hungry, man. He's play. I think he's playing great. I think Marlon Humphrey is playing great, not just good, great. Look at what Stephon Diggs today, next, did today, next to nothing. It doesn't matter, I guess, because we punch it in on the shovel pass to Dobbins two plays later. Great to see him get in the end zone. You know, great to see us use that shovel pass concept again. Uh, Bills get into a good field position on their second possession with a big return and drove down. But on a third and seven, Brandon Stevens broke up a slant intended for McKenzie and held them to a field goal. I thought Brandon Stevens made four or five nice plays today. I thought he got beat in coverage two or three times. I think athletically, some of the guys he's asked to cover at times, you know, they're just a little bit better athletes or more agile than him. But I thought he played well today compared to some of the other things we've seen. You let me know what you think. Um, and then we went on this long drive. I believe our second possession, maybe our third where we're just manipulating the Bills' defense. We converted three third downs, including a fantastic catch by Bateman on a slant against man coverage. There was a, a fullback dive by Ricard on a third and one, and I love that because it was kind of like reverse flow. He was um, he was on the right, I think, in terms of his alignment, and I think the, the run play went to our left. Uh, then we got another touchdown by Dobbins, this one on a lead run play, so we go up 14-3. That second possession was awesome. Gains of, ready, uh, 4, 10, 13, a 1-yard one, one gain on a, on a draw play, a 10-yard gain on a scramble by Lamar on a 3rd and 9, a 3-yard gain on a short completion of Robinson, 14-yard gain, 9-yard gain, 6-yard gain, 4-yard gain, 4-yard touchdown by Dobbins. So I thought that second drive was interesting, especially because we converted three, four, three third downs, maybe four. No, it was three. Okay, I'm scrolling back to look. So we go up 14-3, to three, and then we, then we I think, force another turnover by Oway. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and we recover. Marcus Williams recovers on the backside uh, on the Bills' 36-yard line. Lamar somehow escapes pressure on the first play and finds Dobbins. And it looks like we're rolling to the end zone again. I think that's the last play of the first quarter or, or near, the, near the last play. Actually, I'm wrong. The last play of the first quarter is um, Lamar missing Andrews on a potential touchdown in the right corner of the end zone on the very next play after that completion of Dobbins. <clears throat> and then a few plays later, the game changed. And I'm going to blame Harbaugh on this video. I'm going to talk about Greg Roman. I'm going to talk about Lamar. And some of you are not going to like it. But the game changed on this third and six catch by Andrews where he, like, ever so gently pushed off on Tehran Johnson. And Tehran Johnson didn't even do a big acting job. It was a terrible call. It was a third and six a slant. He beats Tehran Johnson down to the one. I think at that point is 14-3. It's obvious to the refs and anyone else in the NFL, I guess, that we're going to go in and score mega 21-3. Uh, and so they needed, to, they needed to make certain changes. And I think they did. The officiating prior to that moment was not noticeable at all. Once we were a, a half a yard from going up 21-3, to the officiating changed. I think it's a real weak call. That type of contact is rarely called, especially on the offense in 2020. And as, as much as we see these things called on the defense, you know, rarely ever called on the offense, they get one on us. Then we take a sack in an obvious passing situation for on, a, and we, on a third and long, and we settle for a field goal. That was just unique officiating, and I thought there was really some situations thereafter 
where uh, the officiating just showed it, reared its ugly head. Uh, we then even forced the Bills on a three and out, I think, on their next possession. And we go up 17-3, and then we waste, just waste an opportunity, if you ask me. Um, and I think we just got co- too conservative. I think we're up 17-3 with the ball, and three times on first and 10, we run the ball on that possession. And we started talking about it in our Discord. I thought we missed opportunities to attack. Um, and I may have the score wrong there, but I believe we were up 17-3. Had a little bit longer possession. Uh, maybe I got my possessions mixed up, but I know there was one where it's three first downs in a row where we run the ball, and it's a total of two yards, maybe three, on those three first downs. And so we get nothing out of it. We end up getting a field goal, I think, to go up 20-3. to three. And then I think we even stopped the Bills on the next possession on that nice challenge by Bynes where Stevens is kind of beat by a step. Um, but but my overall point in terms of the first half, yes, we're up 20 to 3 at one point, you know, then the Bills get a touchdown late in the half to make it 20 to 10. In my opinion, we can blame ourselves for some of this. I'm gonna blame John Harbaugh. I'm gonna blame Greg Roman for some of the things I just talked about. I'm even gonna talk to you about I don't think Lamar played very well at all. I think the quarterbacks both struggled though. And I'll explain that a little later. But we should blame ourselves a little bit for the missed opportunities we had to really put them away. And simultaneous to that, man, there's nothing wrong with complaining about the refs. You know, some of these situations in terms of the penalties that were called, again, they were not called until we're getting ready to, we're, we're knocking on the door to go up 21 to 3. It's very easy to connect the dots there, if you ask me. All right. Um, now let's talk about the second half. Uh, the thing that everybody wants to talk about, you're, you're simultaneously going to like and hate some of the things I'm going to say, depending on you know what your perspective is on the Ravens in 2020. I think the unfortunate thing is, no matter what our perspective is on this game, it's kind of skewed by the fact that Lamar doesn't have a contract. And, and, and I mean, no, this is a grown man's game. We shouldn't be like sensitive about things, issues, feelings. Having said that, a, a lot of the reaction to this, I think, is going to be exacerbated by the fact that Lamar doesn't have a contract. That's just a side thought that I have to this. So uh, the blame for this lies you know, with the whole team. But anytime you have a loss like this, people are going to take the blame. In turn, Well, maybe they, they may not try to. Apparently, Harbaugh's post-game interview was weird. Let's put it that way. Um, but I'm going to talk about three people. Um, and, and Harbaugh, Roman, and Lamar, you know, to be honest with you. And I'm going to compare Lamar to Josh Allen in this game. They both played poorly. I mean, they both played below their standards, which they have incredibly high standards, right? So um, let's talk about let's talk about Harbaugh and the decision. It's a horrible decision. It might be the dumbest coaching decision that I have seen in, in, ever. Well, excuse me, since last year. Uh, the, the only difference with this one is this one was to take the lead in a home game with like like four minute four and a half minutes left in the game I think there, there's just no way there's just no way to defend this decision none in my in my opinion this decision is is just as bad as wink's decision to play four to play cover zero and bring eight against the Bears last year on fourth and 11 in Chicago but there's some clear differences like Here's one of the main differences. John Harbaugh is the head coach. You know what I mean? Like that was Wink doing something that Wink believed in. It was wrongheaded. It was dumb. It was absolutely the wrong decision. It's probably what got him fired. Well, I mean, John, you're the head coach. You know, you're the person who made this decision today. How is this decision any different from Wink's decision? It's short-sighted. It's wrong-headed. And it doesn't take into a – here's the worst part. Those things are bad. Here's the worst part. It doesn't take into account the gameplay leading up to that. That's situational awareness. Um, (laughs) We have a decision to to let the team take a 23-20 lead, right, and go for it. Instead, go for it on four from two in a game that, let's be honest, the Bills' defense has dominated us for the last 30 minutes, Okay. The Bills' defense has taken us out of the game 
since the point we go up 20 to 3. All right? I don't blame Lamar for his interception on the 4th and 2. I don't. I mean, I don't know about you. I don't, I don't think there is any blame for Lamar on the 4th and 2 in terms of his decision to throw the ball. You know, he, he had to throw it. We don't have another down to work with. So I give him no blame in that situation. Except, if, if I was going to assign Lamar any blame, it would be this. I think he's got to be the leader of the team. I, if it's not John Harbaugh, which it appears as if it may not be, I love Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, Marcus Williams. I think they're great players. You know how much I like Josh Bynes. Calais Campbell, I think the world of. Justin Houston, I think he's a great player, a great competitor. So far, it doesn't appear as if any of those guys are the leader of this team. And I understand who Lamar is. He's a great player. He's a competitor. I think he's a genuine person. He's got a lot of maturity for being a young person. This might be too much to ask. But at some point, I think he might have to look his head coach square in the eye before going on the field in that fourth and two and say, Coach, kick it. Our defense is balling today. He shouldn't have to make that decision, okay? Lamar should not have to say that. His head, his head coach should. And I'm going to give you an aside here. Uh, if John Harbaugh is going to continue to make these decisions, which apparently he is, you know, I mean, I guess, you're not going to stop, <laughs> then it's almost like he needs an advisor on the sideline or in a headset who's, who's not calling plays, who's not involved. They're just involved with game flow. Someone who could say, hey, your defense is balling. Yeah, the Bills have scored 10 points in the second half. I, I get that. I understand that they're coming back, and us as fans watching the game, we have this sense of, oh, they're the Bills are going to come back to win. We're, we're thinking that, though, guys, because of what the Dolphins did. Like, evaluate this in terms of this game today and the weather and the situation today. I'm going to talk about Josh Allen and Lamar's stats in a little while. I'm not going to show you a possession with play-by-play -play breakdown. I'll do that in a separate video tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I feel like, well, me personally, I need to get this off my chest, and I think that you guys probably are you know, consuming everybody's content to see what they think. So here's what I think. 20-20, 20 20, fourth and goal on the two. Somebody, Lamar, uh, John Harbaugh's dad, or someone who's an advisor for him that he trusts, needs to say, hey, man, the defense is balling. They're playing their guts out. It's Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. By the way, you know, Stephon Diggs didn't do much. I wonder why that is. I wonder who's on our side that, that played for a lot of the game and played well, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. It's no wonder Peters was pissed off at the end. But anyway, let's, let's be real for a second in terms of numbers and game flow pattern. Here's the possessions for our defense leading up to that terrible decision, which I guess was made because if we kick the field goal, then they can go down and win 27-23, right? Um, here you go. First possession of the second half, Allen had a 22 yards. Let's look at the concepts. All right, let's look at the concepts. Allen has a 22-yard a scramble on the opening possession of the third quarter. Singletary has a 14-yard 14 14-yard rush, I think, on a toss play where Queen looked like he had a tackle for loss. And then a left guard or left tackle did a great job, I thought, chipping him at the last second. And then Singletary has another 14-yard run on like a downhill concept. They settled for a field goal, though, to cut that 20-10 to 10 lead to 20-13. to 13. That was the first possession. So there was three big plays there. Two of them run plays and one of them a scramble by Allen. I don't know what you're supposed to do against some of this scramble stuff by Allen. Same thing for Lamar. I, don't, I just don't know how you stop it, right? other than being more athletic than them, which we are not. All right, next possession. Diggs had a great catch for like 23 yards. I'm talking about the Bills' second possession of the second half for like 23 yards. And then two of the things that happen in this half, guys, is not the player's fault. We don't line up to trips. And some of you are not going to understand what I'm saying. I said it in the Discord multiple times, and I'm not sure everybody understood that then either, so I'll try to do a video this week to explain it. Trips is three receivers to one side. There has to be a numerical matching or adjustment by your defense. Think of the Bills' only touchdown in the playoff game in 2020 up there. Stephon Diggs screen to bunch. You know how many people we had lined up over to bunch? Two. Now, we're not that bad this year, okay? Got to give – hey, if, if Wink was here and it was trips, we'd at least have three guys over there. You know why? Because we'd be playing man. We just don't line up the trips because we're playing so much like match or zone coverage that we'll have like an off corner, an off safety, 
and maybe one second level player over there. And to trips, it's very easy for them to throw a little bubble screen to number three and block it up on the edge. They went empty and they did so, you know, to the to the three receiver side for like a 16 yard gain. I think a 14 yard gain. And then of course Josh Allen has the the bootleg play where Queen appeared to take a bad angle. Um, and Allen gets in after the review to tie it at 20. Third possession for the Bills is a three and out. So to the point, to the moment when we make this decision, yes, the Bills have scored 10 points in three possessions. I mean, by my count, that's not that bad compared to the way the Bills have been scoring points this year, except for last week against Miami. I think our defense wasn't playing that bad. Were, were the Bills surging? Of course they were. They had scored a touchdown late second quarter. They scored a field goal opening the third quarter. And they scored a touchdown on their second possession. Then we got a stop. That was always sack. So to this point, it doesn't look to me like their offense is unstoppable. Now you may say, well, coach, they went down and scored. Yeah, but we're playing different coverages too. You know, we, we also had a third down there where Chuck Clark kind of keeps his eyes on the quarterback and they hit the tight end Knox over the top. I believe it was a third down on that final drive there. As we go for it, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I keep notes on a laptop, and I'm looking at the laptop right now as I read this out to you. Like, I was writing down Ravens 23-20 lead on my lap, or I was typing it on my laptop as I look up at the TV, and I'm like, we're not doing this, are we? We're, we're not. Okay, here we go. And the ball gets snapped. And it was this feeling of horror and dread. Regardless of the play concept, you know, Lamar throwing an interception, whatever. Why are we going for it? We've held the Buffalo Bills to 20 points in 56 minutes of football. Anything can happen on the next possession. Anything. We had a tip pass for an interception earlier. Oway forced a turnover on a fumble or on a running back earlier. I feel like the defense was playing. Except for that one glaring situation where the, the Bills go empty and they just run a screen to the three receiver side because we will not line up the trips. It's like the most basic thing, um, if you ask me. And it'll be something I'll address in a video form. I actually did speak about it in the preseason. After our first or second preseason game, I said it. I said something like, I'm concerned we're not lining up the trips. I'm concerned about just a bubble out here. And it appears as if other teams are seeing it too. Um, I have to look at the All-22 film, though, and and see you know if my brain is remembering it um, accurately. Um, I think this this week we're all going. It's going to take two or three days to stop being pissed off, and Harbaugh is going to have to answer some real questions. He'll do so respectfully, and he'll well. He better take the heat. Uh, I think some players will defend him, but look, like this whole thing about analytics is not real. It's a mirage. In, in some situations, maybe a fourth and goal from the two in the second quarter or the third or, or whatever, but not with four minutes left and the game is tied. In, in modern football, as so many people call it, all right, that the game is so different now that we call it the modern game, trying to differentiate between 2022 and 2012 and 2002, as if some of the things that happened back then aren't representative of the way football has evolved. No, football is actually devolving in certain ways because of the way it's officiated and because of stupid decisions like this. Throughout the course of football history at every level, if you can take a 23-20 lead with four or five minutes left in the game, to that point your defense is only allowed 20 points. What, what leads you to believe that the other team's just going to zip right downfield and score a touchdown to win? And, oh, okay, if your defense is that bad, they're going to do that. Maybe you're going to get the ball again and get a chance to win. Like, you take the lead. They've only accounted, these two high-scoring offenses have only accounted for 40 points so far. How does analytics take that into account? What, what the hell is so unique and special about analytics that all those coaches in the past, Bill Parcells, Nick Saban, Don Shula, uh, you know, Brian Billick, you know, all these coaches that have won Super Bowls, Mike Tomlin, would they have gone for it there? I'd be willing to bet you they're going to kick the field goal. There's a couple of crazy SOBs that coached that would that would probably go for it. Unfortunately, we appear to have one of them in Baltimore. How many times, because it's like, how many times do you have to make that decision in a row and fail before you stop doing it? There, there's a lot of analogies to make here. And I don't know which one to pick. My brain thought of a few. It almost reminds me, and 
forgive me for this one, I guess. It almost reminds me of someone who can't stop drinking, but yet they keep going and they keep deciding to go to the bar on Friday and Saturday nights. Maybe that that feeling of horror that I described for myself, maybe Harbaugh's addicted to that. Like maybe that six or eight seconds of that feeling of horror that we had and everybody in the stadium had, like, are we really going for this? And we're possibly not going to take the lead. Maybe Harbaugh likes that feeling. Maybe he looks, maybe he's like somebody who enjoys, you know, Friday the 13th, part 37. Like those slasher movies. The rest of us are grossed out or scared or bored. And maybe he really likes it. So give him credit on one thing. Harbaugh ain't scared. But he's not winning with these decisions either. That was a game that you win the majority of the time. Up 17-3, then 20-3, and then with the ball, opportunity to score to take a 23-20 lead and then put all the onus on the Bills. Yes, it gives them a fourth down to deal with in terms of trying to go down and score on that possession, but you have playmakers on your defense. Then they have made plays today, and that's why Marcus Peters was so mad. And, and I side with him. He's absolutely right. Yeah, the Bills scored 20 unanswered. Our defense gave that up, sure. you know, But look, Josh Allen made some plays with his feet. He's a force of nature sometimes. We did a great job on Stephon Diggs. I think Humphrey was responsible for most of that. There was a few times where the run game hurt us, don't get me wrong. I just think that I think two of the concepts that they beat us on in terms of gained a lot of yards on in the second half are things that I'm not sure that the players deserve any blame for. Josh Allen scrambling, breaking tackles, getting away from sacks. I mean, I don't know that you can blame that on our defense. He's more athletic than the, some of the guys that we have trying to sack the quarterback. And then the screen's out of empty. We're not lined up the trips. Thankfully, one of them was dropped, but they caught two of them, and it was 30 yards combined. That's not the player's fault. Um, you know, I'm going to move on a little bit from Harbaugh because I know that last week's reaction video was really long. This one's going to be long too, but, you know, forgive me for that. Uh, you can defend the refs if you want, if you're if you're listening to this video. Um, but, but I had... You know, I can't help but notice patterns. And I didn't see a differential in the in the flags that were penalties that were being called early in the first quarter. Matter of fact, I thought I saw like two holds on us and one on the Bills not called in the first quarter. But once we get to the point where we're getting ready to take that 21-3 lead, then the, the whole game switched. You have the horrible call against Brandon Stevens for hitting Allen late. Like that's horrible. If you want to defend the refs, then you're just soft. And you approve of the game being soft now. Go right ahead. That was a football play. And it stretches the limits of credibility to call those things when a defensive player is pursuing directly at the quarterback. And the quarterback stands directly in the path, isn't moving right or left, and then throws. I just don't think that defensive players should have any onus to pull up any sooner than Brandon Stevens already did. You know, so defend the rest if you want. It's really an indication of how soft the game is and how soft certain people want the game to become, as opposed to anything Stevens did wrong, if you ask me. Uh, there were other calls that were weird. I thought it was an obvious call on the Bills' offense during their second quarter possession when they scored a touchdown. I forget who it was. I think it was on the left side of their offensive line. In the, in the second quarter, when we're up 20-3, to three, I think it was our fifth possession. There's a third and five. Lamar targets uh, Demarcus Robinson. And Edmund, I think it was Edmonds, the inside linebacker, clearly interferes like clearly interferes i mean he was there a full second before the ball maybe it was poyer but he was there a full second before the ball arrived and poyer played very well today no call it doesn't get more obvious it just doesn't get more obvious on defensive pass interference than that especially in 2022 in the, in the modern game that gets called right um so bills go down and score you know after that after third and five we it turns into fourth and five yeah, we dropped a clear interception by Queen. Could have made it twenty to t uh, excuse me. Could have prevented it from being twenty to ten. It was like another deflection, a missed opportunity for Queen, and those things just continue to happen. There's blame everywhere, right? Harbaugh, Queen, in this in this instance, although he's not the only one who missed opportunities to make a plays make plays, but that one was glaring. Roman was just too conservative. Once we got up big, it almost looks like we get up big, and we make a we're not ready for that. Like. It almost looks like we're surprised to be up that that big, and so then we're like, oh, what do we do now? What do we do now? Well, let's go conservative, run the ball, and and run the clock. I just don't think that works in in the modern game now because you can see that a lot of the things that happen 
in terms of penalties that are called later that give offenses first downs are, are shifted toward the offense. And in my opinion, we need to do more of those things. We need to do more attacking. Um, and I, th- I think the real example of that is uh, the drive, the possession that puts us up 20 to three, like I said, those three consecutive first down run plays that actually got us a total of two yards completely. Um, we should keep attacking. And I said that in, after the Miami game, uh, why not? Like, let's look at coaching philosophy for a moment. Be consistent. If you're going to be ultra aggressive and go for it on fourth and goal from the two with a little over four minutes left, and I still can't really believe we did that. Like, I'm, I'm literally saying this right now, and I cannot believe we did it. But if you're going to go for that, okay, go for it, fine. Then why are you running the ball on first down in the second quarter when we're only up 17-3? to three? Why are you trying to shorten the game mid-second quarter with the Bills' offense on the other side, who apparently 30 or 40 minutes of gameplay later, we thought was so unstoppable that a 23-20 lead was nothing? You know, it's, it's almost like we think field goals don't count unless they're in the last 10 seconds of a game. Like, for real, those are those two things incongruous to you? They are to me. If we're going to go for it because a 23-20 lead means nothing, then why the hell are we running the ball and not gaining anything on first and 10 every single time on that possession I'm talking about? If, if 23-20 to 20 means nothing, then then 17-3 or 20-3, to 3, I mean, what, do, what does that mean? I mean, I guess that means nothing. Well, then let's throw the goddamn ball and let's score. <laughs> like... I'm pissed off about it, you can tell. Those two decisions don't seem to be made by the same person, if you ask me. They seem to be reactionary. I, Harbaugh can say they are analytics. They are. I don't think they are. They seem to be reactionary. Like, I'm not prepared for this situation, or or I'm not sure what to do in this situation, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to justify it later with whatever re- reason I want to. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how I feel about the whole thing. I don't have anything good to say about that decision. I can't defend it. I think we have consistently gone conservative in the two games that meant the most so far. Two losses to the Dolphins and Bills. Now, having said that, you know, guys, we have, we're have we dealing with a lot of injuries. You know, we did not play well today offensively. We still very easily could have beat the Bills and the Dolphins. So there is some good things to take from it, but we're not going to focus on that today. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe. Look, I think the rain had an impact, and I'm going to shift this now from Harbaugh and Roman. I'm going to shift it uh, and some of you guys aren't going to like it, you know, for real. Rain had an impact. Uh, Duvernay and Bateman, I think, have a lot of playmaking ability. Bateman b- dropped some balls today. We had trouble catching the balls. So did the Bills. Diggs dropped a touchdown pass on a wide-open slant on the goal line. Two running backs dropped balls where they had room for at least a five- or six-yard gain. Uh, Andrews, I thought, dropped one, but I could be wrong. I think Bateman overall had two drops. And then there was a third play, I think, that was thrown a little slightly out in front of Bateman. So the rain had an impact, I think. But that's not a reason to go be conservative. It's not. I think we're unprepared for the moment. And I think offensively we were confused by what the Bills were doing. I think they did a great job defensively. I do. And I don't, on, on the broadcast angle view, you can't see everything. But I thought we saw a lot of off coverage with two safeties up high and some zone stuff. Now they did, and they rushed four a lot, but they did blitz at times. I thought they blitzed. Uh, at the right moments. I thought they blitzed at certain times when it was beneficial for them to do so, and we were not prepared for it. It seemed like they'd rush four, we'd have time. They'd rush four, we'd have time. And then all of a sudden, they would bring pressure and it would work like it caught us by surprise. And I don't know why we were surprised. It's the same exact thing that they did in the 2020 playoff game. Now, again, I may have saw it wrong, okay? So we'll, when all 22 comes out, I'll be able to tell. Look, they used the sticks blitz zero uh, one time, like that the Dolphins used a lot last year. And Edmonds got free in Lamar's face. Generally, I thought that I thought they were not being real aggressive. I didn't think there was a lot of man free. Although, you know, Teron Johnson was aggressively playing Andrews at times, so maybe they played more man than I thought. So uh, that discussion of the Bills strategy leads me to my last point, or I guess my last two. You know, hopefully you guys are on board of it by now. It's been a long, long reaction video. Uh, Lamar didn't play well. Period. That's clear. The rain seemed to affect him, just like it affected. You know, our wide receivers and the Bills wide receivers and Josh Allen. Here's my evidence of that. Combined, um, Lamar and Josh Allen came into this game, ready? 150 for 220 passing, 68% completion percentage combined between them in the six six games leading up to this, 19 touchdowns and four interceptions. Today, 
Lamar and Josh Allen combined to go 39 for 65, which is 60% completion, two touchdowns and three interceptions. And Josh Allen had two other balls that very easily could have been intercepted, right? So he could have very easily had three picks. One hits Queen in the hands, and another one gets tipped. And veer, and I think Clark was going to pick it off if it's not tipped. And then it veers off to the right of him. So the weather, weather impacted both of them, all right? Uh, but we're going to focus on Lamar. And this is the part that's going to make you a little uncomfortable. Let's give Allen credit for the plays he made in the second half. I'm comfortable enough, enough in my own skin to give him credit for that and, and root against him at the same time. But let's focus on Lamar. He missed some throws today. There was three that were off by like a foot or two. So that's not really that far off. I think it was a slant to Bateman that I would say is like a foot out in front. There, okay, so so it's not like you know inaccurate. It's just not accurate enough to get the job done with the you know, with the small margin for error that you have in the NFL. There was a throw to J.K. out in the right flats that was really behind J.K. I thought that could have been a four- or five-yard gain, and instead it was a loss of five. That one really hurt. That one really hurt. Um, And look, let's be honest. That's the way Lamar looks at himself. He's going to judge himself harshly, okay? Personally, I think the offensive pass interference call on Andrews was soft, ridiculous. I think the call on Stevens was terrible for hitting Josh Allen. If you're a conspiracy theorist, there's a whole lot you can say about shading and trying to influence the game. But all that being said, the offensive pass interference on Andrews on that third and six, it doesn't matter if Lamar hits him in the back right corner of the end zone for a touchdown two plays earlier. On a first and 10 from the 16, the last play of the first quarter, that makes it 21-3 at that point. And then then the, the BS offensive pass interference penalty on Andrews doesn't matter. I think Lamar would be the first person to say he missed that throw and he missed a couple of the other ones, all right? So in terms of Lamar, we focus on him. Allen didn't play good either. He was 19 of 36, as you see on the screen right there, right? Average 5.9 yards per per attempt. I think our defense did a really daggone good job on him, you know, for real. Now I'm going to tie all this in at the end, all right? Just accept, even if you, you don't like it, just accept that Lamar didn't play good. Like he didn't even play good. All right. I think I think he actually misread one of the counter option plays. All right. But the play calling didn't help him either. Accept all of it. Accept both of those things. No matter if you're like you don't like Lamar but you love Greg Roman, or you you love Lamar but you hate Greg Roman, or you like both of them, or whatever. Accept both of those things for a moment. Evaluate it like an independent observer, and there's a reason why. So stay with me. Just accept that Lamar didn't play good. Accept that the play calls didn't help him. As an independent observer for a minute, and this is coming from somebody who wants to defend Lamar all the time. Ready? Here you go. If he's not playing well, and we're not calling good plays against the calls the Bills are are making, the defense the Bills are playing, right? If those two things are true, and I forced you to accept that a minute ago, and they they made us execute to go up and down the field, and we we had trouble doing that, except when we got turnovers then why do you go for it on fourth and two with four minutes left? That's my point. Somebody has to be the adult in the room. And today, John Harbaugh showed again that he won't be. When we go for it on that fourth and two, we haven't scored a point in 30 minutes of gameplay. Since Justin Tucker's field goal puts us up 20-3, to three, with 340 left in the second quarter, we haven't scored. I haven't even come close to scoring. Here's our second half possessions. Three plays, negative five yards, punt. Five plays, 18 yards, punt. Then that third possession of the second half, seven plays for 23 yards, where we throw the interception on the first play of the fourth quarter. That was our big adjustment. First and 10, first play of the fourth quarter, we're going to throw the ball over over the middle to Andrews on a play action. That's what we do like 40 to 50% of our pass plays. That was terrible. Our second half offense sucked. If Harbaugh is going to, in terms of production, okay? If Harbaugh is going to make a decision to go for it because our defense hasn't demonstrated they can stop them, <laughs> why are you going for it? You know what I mean? Like, what? how do you justify going for it and saying, I think our offense is going to succeed? When have we succeeded against this Bills defense today in the last 30 minutes? It really hasn't happened. Now, look, get, hope, I don't know. I'm not sure I made my point there with the last part. Me, me ordering you and commanding you to accept those two things. My, I'm putting the onus on Harbaugh. If Lamar's not playing good and we're not calling good plays against this defense, 
what reason do we have to go for it on fourth and two and waste a great opportunity to get up against a very good football team, might be an overrated football team, but a very good football team, to get up 23-20 with four and a half minutes left or so. But overall, let's give our guys credit for competing. Bills are a dangerous team, but they're not a super team that we can't be beat. That we can't beat. We let them off the hook. We let them off the hook. Our coaches let them off the hook. You know my opinion. I don't think Lamar played well, but I think the weather impacted a lot of the flow of the game for him and Josh Allen in terms of throwing the ball and the receivers catching the ball. So it's it's excusable for me in the in the overall summation of the game. I think the overall impression I get is that while we let the Bills off the hook, the decisions by Harbaugh and even to a lesser extent Greg Roman have now put those two squarely on a hook. Because one week from now, at home against the Bengals, right about the time you're probably listening to this, will be a defining moment for our team and our, and our coach. Like he won a Super Bowl with a team full of leaders, the guys that were leaders, guys that could lead a group of men, right? Now, that decision today, if you ask me, puts, puts Harbaugh in the crosshairs as someone who might not be able to be a leader himself anymore. Because these decisions in the games that matter, he's demonstrated he will not make the right one for the situation. And that guy right there on the screen is not wrong for being pissed off. Some, sometimes you got to be the bad guy. And, and that guy right there was willing to be the bad guy and say, that was messed up. Let me know what you think. What you think about my final thought there? Oh, Marcus Peters, or my fi- it pisses me off, you know, because I've seen young men play hard and then something happens that's out of their control and a frustration they have to deal with. I'm glad Marcus Peters was frustrated. I hope he continues to speak up, you know. Um, but as it is as fans, at some point, we've all got to turn the page, right, that old saying. But that doesn't mean we should forget about this book. Because, like, sometimes you, t- you finish a book and you put it on the shelf, you organize it, maybe alphabetically or by size, however you organize your books on a bookshelf. And you do that because like you're satisfied with the ending of the book and it makes sense in your brain. But sometimes you take that book, I don't know about you, you like set it on your computer desk or you put it on your nightstand because even when you're finished with it, you're confused or disappointed with the ending. And maybe you want to pick up that book randomly and just smack someone in the head with it to make yourself feel better. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel today. Let me know what you think of my thoughts, the whole reaction video, and the last couple thoughts I have there, and what you think we're going to be able to produce as a team next week in week five at home against the Bengals.